Hey, welcome to Game Night Now. It is uh, November 28th. I am Mex, your host, here with Dan as always. Say hi. Yep. What's going on? <clears throat> so, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, did you make any big purchases on Black Friday? Entirely too many. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the wife got a new phone. She got a new Pixel 3. Nice. Uh, bought a Panasonic camera. Mm. Um, uh, tons of stuff for the pets. Like that seemed like the biggest deals on Amazon were pet deals. Yeah. So the, the dog got all kinds of toys. The cat got toys. Everyone got pretty much taken care of. Yeah. Did about you already you. give Mindy her phone. Oh yeah. She, that wasn't really a purchase. That wasn't a gift or anything. That was, uh, uh she bought that for herself. Yeah. Sarah and I did the same thing. Like she bought me a switch. So I opened it up on Saturday and <laughs> she got herself, um, a Samsung watch. Um, cool. one, one of the watches. So, uh, you know, we're adults. We're like, we don't need to wait till Christmas. We're just going <laughs> to yeah, do now. Exactly. That's the best part about being an adult. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. Then you're going to be all depressed when you don't have anything to open underneath the tree. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll buy some little gifts or something. There you go. Actually open up on Christmas. But Good yeah, stuff. the Switch. Um, we got, uh, you know, the Mario Kart bundle. Yeah. Um, but she also bought uh, Pokemon Let's Go. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know me. When I play a game, I play that's a it. game. Oh, I've, 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 every time I turn my Switch on, that's what you're doing. So. Yes. Uh, I've had it since Saturday. That's five days ago. I've played mm-hmm. 42 hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. 42 hours. So, uh, yeah, we're going pretty strong there. It's just like uh, my so old Final Fantasy 11 days. So you're done. Like, you beat the game. It's, oh, I already beat the now. game, yeah. But there's, like, yeah. end game content now, which is really cool. So, basically, uh, the game that I have, Let's Go Pikachu, is basically Pokemon Red. Okay. Um, you know, there is red and blue. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a Let's Go Eevee, which is like Pokemon Blue. Um, sure. So just like in red and blue, they have um, a set of Pokemon that you can't get in the other game. Mm-hmm. Um, so you basically have to trade for those. And uh, there's end game content um, where there are shiny Pokemon, which are mm-hmm. at extremely low drop rate, basically. Um, so I beat the game in like 24 hours. And the past 18 hours, I've just been sitting in one spot waiting for a shiny Pokemon to appear so I can catch it. Yes. So that's been my life for the past five days, and I'm loving it. So uh, let's have you have you done any of the Go integration, like brought any Pokemon from Go yes, over? Yes. Um, I'm still trying to fill up my Pokedex. You know, there's 150 Pokemon. Um, sure. And like I said, you can't get them all. 151. You yeah, got to get sorry. that. You have to sorry, buy sorry. that. Uh, yeah, you have to buy that. You got to get Mew in there. Use the you have to buy the the controller. Yeah, little the Pokeball. little Pokeball thing. Yeah. yeah, Sarah bought that too, but uh, no, she's got you in her game. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, coming over from Pokemon Go. So yeah, I've been transferring over the Pokemon you can't get in the game that I have to try to fill up my Pokedex. Um, I'm two away, so I'm getting there. So yeah, I'm having a what having you, a lot of fun you, with what that. You, what are you missing? I need you got a, oh. you got a Mr. Mime. Yep, you got a, got a Mr. Volpix. No, I need a Volpix. You need a Volpix. That's, like, that's a good guess. I only took me two guesses. Yeah, to I know. Get to that me. was pretty pretty surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Volpix and I need a Gengar. Gengar. It's uh, one of the ghastly. Gengar is, I, he's a Gengar. Isn't he an evolution of Hauser? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the Pokemon that um, in the original game you trade Haunters and then they automatically evolve. Gotcha. gotcha so it's gotcha. the same way in this game where he doesn't just evolve based on level. You have to mm-hmm. trade him or import him from Pokemon Go as Gengar. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Like the past three days, I've been driving around Hershey. I've been driving around Palmyra looking for a fucking Vulpix. I cannot <laughs> find one for the life of me. And it's pissing me off. Because it's been so windy the past couple of days, Pokemon in Pokemon Go, Pokemon come out based on the weather. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And Vulpix is a fire Pokemon, so it sure. only comes out more often when it's like sunny out. And it hasn't been like that in the past couple of days. So oh, I've just been it's uh, not, spending. It's not, looking, it's not looking good that we're going to have too many more sunny days. No, no. So yeah, my life for the past five days has been Pokemon Go, uh, Pokemon Let's Go, sorry. Mm-hmm. Driving around looking for two Pokemon in Pokemon Go, <laughs> sleep and work. That's hey, it. that sounds like a pretty good life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've I've been having a good time. So good stuff, man. Good stuff. But yeah, well, that's pretty I much have a, all I've I been have playing. 
back so. catalog of awesome Switch games for you to borrow whenever you feel like you're ready to have a new challenge. Because we'll see. I'm gonna buy that... Katamari when it comes out. Well, yeah, it comes out I... the seventh, I believe. Mario and Zelda are two of the best games ever made. So see, even not... if I mean Mario, I'll play. Like I've never really played Zelda games. Eh, like I played matter. the first one. I don't know. I'm just thinking it's not the type of no, game no, for me. It, no, you're you're good. You're, you'll love it. I promise you. Yeah. You don't have to buy it. You can just borrow it from me. No, all right, that's fine. Uh, by the way, do you have to pay to like use their online service? Yeah, unfortunately, you came in right. You know, they they turned that on maybe two months ago. Yeah. It's not bad. It's twenty bucks a year, mm-hmm. and you get access to a bunch of NES games that they integrated online into so like dodgeball and volleyball and things like that i think golf is in there golf. you can play online with other people and they they've done some cool little things like done a, a version of zelda where you start out with all the items already and all the secrets are unlocked and you can just kind of explore um you yes know, phil i need a vulpix <laughs> but you can't you uh like you can't trade it to me in pokemon go and then I can't import it, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Like, you could... Because I have a Gengar that I got from Sarah, but I can't import it into Let's Go because you can't import traded Pokemon, I believe. I think. I don't know. I've been playing the game for five days, so well, I, don't, I don't know. Phil, Phil do you... I don't, this is awful for a podcast, but we're going to interact with the chat here for a little bit. Phil, do you have... Uh... Let's go. Yeah, he's got. Um, I think he said he has the same one that I do. Let's go. Well, Pikachu. just tell tell him to import his Gengar into his own game and then trade it that way. But then I need to pay twenty dollars to trade. Oh, you, you need can't the you online just, You can't. You can't just do the local. Oh, I don't know. Maybe like the local local Wi Fi. They spit out a little hotspot for themselves to get onto, and you can. Yeah. This is this is research that uh, needs to be done. Yeah. If we can do that, that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, Phil, I've been driving around looking for Vulpix and like I'm tearing my hair out because I cannot find one. <laughs> and it's pissing me off so much. But yeah. So uh, have you been uh, able to play any games the past week? I know you've been busy uh, uh, with real life yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I've, I've put a couple more hours into Red Dead Redemption and uh, I'm a 100% flipped. It's a good game. Yeah. I I didn't think I was going to get here. I thought that there was no way I would ever like this game. It was boring. It's cumbersome. It didn't, but it's just it's just a really good game. So that's pretty much where I've been. I've been at night when I. The, the one thing about the game, and, and it's the same complaint I've always had, is that trying to play it in short chunks is not great. Yeah. So. At night, when I only want to play something for like 45 minutes, I usually don't pick that up. I've just been grinding Magic the Gathering online. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of gold now, so I'm going to see, oh, like, take my uh, take my shots at a few drafts here and see yeah. if I'm any yeah. good or not. Yeah, those are fun. Definitely worth it. Um, yeah, and it's, I, I, lo- of- finally, I, I unlocked that Merfolk deck that uh, you were pounded me in with. So, yeah, yeah that, that, thing, that think, thing works pretty well. I think that's the best deck to like grind with because... Yeah. It's relatively good, and there's like no rares. You can actually take the rares out, and the deck will be okay. Mm-hmm. And that way, you'll get paired with decks that have basically no rares. So you're basically, you know, pairing down. Basically, you have a really good deck. You take out the good cards, so you get you know paired up against crappy people or people with crappy decks, I guess. Yeah. So that that is what I would suggest if you're uh, actually gonna grind out a little more. Uh, I I just left it the same way. I only I probably win two thirds of my matches. Yeah. Just with the the base deck, I I don't I get tired of it, so I switch over to the uh, little fungus deck that they give you. Yeah. That's a fun deck to play with. Yeah. Yeah. I but recently I've just been like getting my five wins a day because that's mm-hmm. where you get the most gold, and then I've just yep. been calling it because I mean I, don't I, I think I burned myself minutes, out. So pretty bad with... well you played non-stop well you burn yourself out on anything that you play yeah, you're gonna, yeah, know. you know we've, we've proven that ask already. me next week how i feel about pokemon <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we'll see if i get burned out or not but uh Sounds speaking good. about red dead redemption uh yep. today their online beta just started 
Yes. It's uh, apparently a completely different game, but it yep. has new story missions, I guess. Yep. It's uh, very similar to GTA Five Online, where they they put in you know new missions, new everything. They put also put in like the deathmatch shit and uh, uh, just roaming around the world and you know screwing with other people. Unfortunately, yeah. the beta rolled out very strangely. It actually rolled out yesterday for anybody that bought the ultimate edition of the game. Is that just an extra like? 50 bucks on top something like that you I don't get know, like a, like, some, a book or something with it something i didn't buy i don't know what it was I, I, i'm not really much of a ultimate collector's edition kind of guy sure so then the next today it's out for anybody that played the game the first day it was out and that goddamn download was so big that i didn't wasn't <laughs> able to play that night so i'm i have to wait until i think tomorrow and then i can jump in and play yeah yeah if you played like the first three days i think tomorrow unlocks mm -hmm. and then it unlocks for everybody on friday yeah. yep yep um cautiously optimistic about it i didn't really care for uh, gta online mm -hmm. because every time i would log in it seemed like the same dude would just follow me around and kill me non-stop and it yeah. wasn't very fun so I mean, doesn't uh, that remind you of world of warcraft just try bit. to level on the pvp servers yeah a little bit you just Only get camped and like it, you it can't do anything exactly Usually, in, in you know, somebody would come to your rescue. It never felt like anybody was coming to my rescue. So, yeah. like I said, cautiously optimistic. We'll see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, something cool that just started today. Or yesterday, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to shoot Sarah a quick text. All right. But uh, you want to talk was, about the uh, uh, Game Awards? Yeah, Game Awards are coming up. They're already here. Feels like uh, just yesterday we were talking about who we thought we were going to win each category, but uh, they're going to be here. Shit. Next Thursday? Is that they are. broadcast on Twitch? Or Twitch, that... yep. It used to be on um, Spike or one of those, you know, man networks. Mm -hmm. But I think they decided that it wasn't worth their time. There's somebody else took their spot. There's another game, Gamey Awards, like Gamer's Choice Awards are going to be on the cw or something like that it really? looks awful yeah the, the game awards are where it's at that this is where big announcements are going to happen and that that's actually the thing i'm most excited about because jeff Keeley, the guy that runs the game awards has been teasing stuff for months now and he just came out and said that there's going to be 10 game reveals at the game awards so i mean i, I feel like that's that's going to be worth a watch i think i just broke our video okay there we go Sorry. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. I touched <laughs> Discord and my computer did not like that. So. Uh, we froze up there for a second. <laughs> I think the audio stayed through. Yeah, though. yeah, the audio is good. It's just the video. Uh, so 10 new games. Um, yes. It looks like uh, something about Alien, a new Alien game. Yeah, there's been some uh, some clamorings on the internet. So there was a trademark of a game, of a game called Alien Blackout that just got uh, you know leaked. Yeah. Or revealed and then um uh, kojima was uh over at 20th century fox mm -hmm. and he took a bunch of pictures with you know the alien egg yeah, yeah. and then right after that jeff Keeley with the game awards uh twitter account said the world will change so i mean if you can't put two and plus two together to get you know alien blackout is going to get revealed at the game awards i don't know that, yeah. that seems like a slam dunk one of the uh, like three games I had on my Jaguar was a oh, game yeah. called uh, Alien vs Predator. Oh yeah, no, no, I believe me. I That's, love that game this, so much. This, so this, I'm actually uh, this topic is in here because I was hoping Tim was going to be on this week because he's also likes that game. Oh really? He's a big Alien fan. I this I mean depending on how uh, this Alien Blackout game you know is, I would be very interested to see it. Because I it, I love that Alien vs Predator game. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. The last game that came out was Alien Isolation, and that was like a horror game. And there was you know a lot of just standing still mm. and waiting until the aliens left. Yeah. And you know not making any noise. Yeah. Or else the aliens would just come and get you. And if you're into like the horror y kind of jump scare kind of game, that was for you. But that's not me. Yeah. And the one before that was the last one that I played, and it wasn't a good game. I don't even remember what it was called. My roommate had it. But I think that's definitely the the shoe in, and if you want to get Steve pulled in here, I can talk for a while. Okay, we're gonna lose video for a second. All right. Well, actually, we're gonna lose the call. Unless, how do you add can't, somebody? Can't you just add him? I don't know. I don't know how to work Discord. Oh Jesus Christ! 
<laughs> 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 Add friends to DM. Let me try yep. this. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. I think we broke it. Yeah, okay. you're gonna need you're Hold gonna on. need to straighten yeah, us out. Here. I gotta resize. Oh jeez. All right. So <laughs> while he's getting that figured out, hey. that leaves if so alien blackout. Steve, how you doing? Can you hear us? Yeah. All right, cool. I can hear you too. You sound good. We're getting there. We're getting there. We just, are just we we're just talking about the games that we think might get it revealed at the game awards this year. We just talked about some of the evidence that's pointing towards an alien game. And uh I'm gonna talk about what I think else is gonna get announced. Because nine games is a lot of games. Uh Final Fantasy Seven, the remake. Well they <laughs> You think they're gonna do another one? Oh wait. What happened to Dan? Dan disappeared. Hmm. <laughs> We're having some uh, technical difficulties, I think. Oh, wait. Maybe I disappeared. Due to technical difficulties, we now bring you eight animated shows in a row. Because there's like a little delay. Well, you, I mean, it probably isn't a delay. They can probably hear all this stuff. Like no. we're totally back on. We've been back on the entire time. No. Okay. No. All right. What? Start talking. Go ahead. All right. All anyway, right. you asked me, is there anything I'm looking forward to? Yeah, I'm not even looking forward to. Just to something that you would love to see. What What's a game series that? Oh, there's there's a cat. What I she actually, do? I actually have a hard time with this one because I don't know if there's anything even within a franchise right now that I really want to see uh, that I think would come to me. Like if I could have whatever I wanted, then like a Castlevania Symphony of the Night part two would be amazing. But uh, I don't think that would come to PC anytime soon. They'd do it on the, the PS everything what? for like three years and then it would suddenly show up. Mm -hmm. Um other than that, the only thing I would probably be so psyched for that it would hit one of those I'm going to buy day one games, probably a Terraria 2, and only if it didn't look like shit, because <laughs> they've like redid that game like two or three times now, because they uh, went out to, they farmed out to another developer, I think, or a group of people to make it, and then when the guy checked it out, he's like, no, nah, this this isn't anything like what I want. And they just fucking totally scrapped it. I haven't heard anything since. But uh, would that be on this sort of platform for them to release? No, I don't think they're going to do no, that. No, this that might. Anymore. I mean, the, the guys over at Kind of Funny, uh, another you know podcast, are putting on a game showcase the Saturday after Game Awards. They have 60 game announcements. And I think like a game like Terraria, if they're going to do something like that, would be perfect for that. They're announcing some smaller titles. Yeah, Terraria is one of those games that uh, ever since I played it, I think it has not existed on my computer for a total of like a month. <laughs> but um, that's one of those games that I love to go back to. And I I don't like doing those, uh, try to get every achievement in a game. I don't ever give a shit about that. Yeah. And this is the only game I've ever attempted to do that, and I'm only one achievement away, and I just can't bring myself to sit there and fish for like five hours or whatever. I Max, will Max, Max will Max will do it for you. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, I've been sitting there looking at Pokemon Spawn for six hours straight, so uh, I'll do whatever the hell you need. I, I eventually I'll go back and do it, but I had played after one of the updates, and I played with a couple of my friends, and we built this huge thing and did everything that we could do. And then the achievements got updated, and they're like, "Oh, well, here's an achievement, and you have to, uh, you have to do a shitload of stuff for it." And I was like, "I've already done this probably two, three times, put in all that investment, and now I have to do it all over again just for the achievement because now, now the achievement exists to keep count of it." And I was like, "I can't do that right now, but I'm going to play this game for the rest of my life, so I'm eventually going to come back and, and wrap that up." But no, I haven't. I haven't really been excited about any triple A games because I've either missed most of them or a lot of them belong to uh, consoles, which I don't pay any attention to. Like, I don't play Assassin's Creed games. I don't really care about Tomb Raider, um, God of War. I like Skyrim. 
and Fallout, but Fallout has a game and it fucking sucks. So <laughs> well, uh, let's let's yeah. let's burn through a little bit more. We can get to some Fallout chatter. Um, I think that we're if you would have talked to me two days ago, I would have thought that Skyward Sword remake for the Switch was a hundred percent lock, and then Reggie just came out yesterday and said they're not making it, or that might even have been earlier today, and. So uh, Nintendo probably is going to put something like uh, maybe a Metroid Prime Trilogy remake, get everyone ready for Metroid Prime 4, which I think is going to be another announcement. They already announced it's happening. I think we're going to get a reveal trailer for that. Uh, I think we're going to see some some uh, Animal Crossing footage for the first time. We, you know, they announced that at the Direct you know, a couple months ago, so I think we're going to see something there too. Um, some more Yoshi, Yoshi shit, you know. Ryan, are you interested in Zelda? Uh, I'm not a huge fan. I haven't enjoyed a Zelda since they were 2D. And I never. Well, they I, they still make 2D Zeldas. But I've just... never, I've never carried on after a Link to the Past. I played like some Game Boy ones. I played Link to the Past, and then it moved on to Nintendo 64, which I didn't do. And then I picked up the, what's the Wii one? Skyward Sword. That's... Yeah, and I played that for half an hour and got bored of it. That that's not the best example of a Zelda game. You you're you're missing. Yeah, I know. You I'm missed three of the best Zelda games in Wind Waker, Majora's Mask, and sixty four. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Wind Waker. I did play because I had a GameCube. And I did actually really enjoy that one. Wind Waker. Didn't, Wa didn't really feel like a Zelda to me. Uh, I mean, that's what Zeldas feel like now. The you gotta. You go, if you get a Switch, which it, I think is the best companion console to a PC gamer, you got to get Zelda, or you at least got to borrow it from me. I was just telling Max, he has to borrow Zelda from me, and at least try it for a little bit, see if it sticks. Tim's the only person I've ever met that didn't like the game, and that's just because he's not good at video games. <laughs> I If I had a Switch, which I'm constantly on the fence about doing, but it's not an investment that I can do right now, mm -hmm. probably not for quite a while but i also can't bring myself every time i go to like walmart or whatever because i don't go to game stores anymore i see all the games that have been out since launch and they're all still expensive and i'm like fuck do welcome I wanna... to nintendo i was like do i want to join that ecosystem again where i have to buy physical media and it's always expensive i'm just like i don't know but i would really like to get a um switch because that way I can spend more time kind of being with like my family in a physical mm -hmm. sense and be able to play. Whereas I have to kind of like beg, borrow, steal to get this time off to play, play or talk with you guys. Sure. Now the, I'll tell you what the suspended state on a Nintendo switch is the greatest thing. I mean, the other systems have it, but for some reason this just feels better. You just push the power button. It goes to sleep and you push it, turn it back on. And the game is exactly where you left it. Yeah, it was kind no of lag, no load, no nothing. Turn it off. Is there you can only a sleep function. No, you can turn it off, but you have to try to. It's not like yeah, you okay. can. That's not. It, yeah, it puts like it to it's, sleep it's unless you. It's not an option you... anywhere. No, you gotta you gotta go into the, hold the button down mm -hmm. until power options comes up, and then you'll have the op opportunity to put it to you know actually turn it off. And the only time I turn mine off is when I'm traveling with it, and I don't want it to accidentally turn on in my bag. Yeah. So, but. Has has Nintendo gotten any better at physically being online? Because the last time I dealt with this was uh, we have a 3DS upstairs that I wanted to mess around with, and I hadn't did it since I got a new router. So I had to re re input some of the Wi Fi stuff, and it's the hugest pain in the ass because it's such an archaic system. And then I remembered that even the Wii was like that. Just no, I mean, Nintendo doesn't know what the hell they're doing. This is the best that they've done so far, and it's still five years behind what like PlayStation and Xbox are doing. Luckily, they're not charging near what PlayStation and Xbox charge for online play. They, they yeah, recently... Uh, not, no, online, not on play. I mean, like, actually connecting it to... Oh, online. no. Yeah, no, I have no, pro I have no problems connecting it online. No. Is you it just like... need, like, a Nintendo account, and it goes... Okay, but is it just like a phone nowadays where it's like, here's the Wi-Fi signal? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, yeah. This, the 3DS was not like that. You have to sit there and it's like, what is the PIN, password, ID, Nick, yeah. ID no. number? I'm like, Jesus no, no, Christ. No. Like, it's it's, inf it's infrastructure is much better. Yeah. All right. 
because I remember that being a huge headache because <clears throat> nah, they, they were real behind in like just the hardware for connecting. I was like, that's not difficult. Every <laughs> cell phone in the past like 20 years has been, hey, I have Wi-Fi. Do you want to connect? Put a password. Mm-hmm. We're good. No, they, they've thought of most things. They There's not a browser, but they put a browser in there. If you go to like a public Wi-Fi and need to authenticate, it'll let you do that. Um, there's not really any, I mean, I haven't found any problems. It doesn't have the best card in the world in it. So it's signal sometimes is a little weak, but if it's, it's perfectly serviceable. Well, it was mostly cause I don't care about playing online, but you want online features like the updates and the eShop and all that business. So mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be a huge pain in the ass. To no, get that. I mean, I've, I've been all digital on my switch for a couple of games now, and I've had no problem. The games are also really small. So they don't take very long to download. Yeah. Unless you buy some of the third party, some of the stuff that Bethesda's putting out. Like you buy Skyrim or, you know, um, what did Rockstar just put out? That uh, detective game, whatever. Those games are really big and they'll fill your hard drive up really fast. But the actual first party Nintendo games are super small. But uh, moving on to the next topic, speaking of Bethesda, um, they're getting sued for having a shitty game. And not giving people their money back. Yeah, what's up with that? I mean that that's pretty much the whole story. They they uh, Fallout Fallout seventy six is is a high up pile of hot garbage according to people that have played it. I haven't so, played it, so what? I couldn't I can't really comment on that. But judging by what other people are saying, it's not very good. I'm I'm on the fence about this one because I don't have the details right. So, mm-hmm. what system or is it all systems across the board? Uh, I've heard PCs the is where well let me let me say PCs where a lot of the complaints are coming from, but that might just be the audience. The PC audience tends to be a little bit pickier when it comes to things. So let's see. Uh, how do they what? How do they get it? What's it on? Um, I'm not it's sure. Not it's probably Beth- whatever Bethesda's launcher is. So. I know that um, Steam had to put in a refund system because there's some like laws in the UK or some business over there, and they basically were kind of forced into conforming into that. And I've used it a couple times uh, for like just games I just sheerly didn't enjoy or didn't mm-hmm. didn't come up as advertised. Actually, uh, over the Steam sale we just had, I returned a game. Uh, which I haven't done in like a year. Um, Hellgate London came out. Did you ever hear that? Uh -uh. That was like the OG first person shooter MMO type thing. And I remember that coming out in like the early 2000s and being like, oh, I really want to play that. For some reason, I couldn't. Uh, Either it was... I was still in consoles at the time or I didn't have a computer that could handle it. Turned out it was shit. So it kind of fell apart after that. But apparently there's a cult following and they reworked the game to be single player. And I was like, oh man, I really want to give that a shot since I never did. Paid the 10 bucks, played it for 48 minutes, I think it was my time. And then I was like, I've, I've got to send this back. It is <laughs> garbage. Well, uh, you, you have, you've, since you've done this, you can um, talk about what, what is it? Two, is it two hours of game time? And then you can send it back? They take a, a couple factors, but the game time, I think, is one of the major ones. So, yeah, about two hours. Um, so that's why I was wondering if it was on Steam, because depending on what kind of bugs you're running into, you may or may not be able to hit that so it's one thing if you just have a game that's buggy people aren't enjoying it and they want to return it and it's another if the game is like you can't even win because you get to the end and the boss is bugged and there is no effective end for you which you wouldn't be able to do that in that time frame so Mm -hmm. i think the refund system may kind of take that into account based on your complaint but generally it's like you know if they if you've gone over two or three hours it's like well you've played the game for that long you shouldn't yeah. be able to figure out whether or not you're going to keep it um well, you mentioned dan that you're all digital now so mm-hmm. <clears throat> does this make you more or less hesitant to uh buy this games is, in digital format this this is one of the things that's scary 
because you know even if you you go to say you go to walmart and you buy a game you open it up you put it in you still have that game and it still has some value and even if it's just a reduced amount of money that you can take it back to gamestop or try to sell it on ebay or whatever you can at least recoup some of the loss uh with it being a digital you know digital only it's it's scary because you got to really do your research on this shit because you know you're making an investment and that's that's something that you're going to own and own quotation marks because you're just buying a license for it um i'm not i wonder if their platform has any issues with returns like does whatever their bethesda.net it's you have to download it from bethesda.net supposedly a lot of people were having success getting refunds and then all of a sudden they just stopped giving refunds to everybody i think it was when the shit storm started happening that you know you know the internet was getting lit on fire with all these yeah. bad reviews and whatnot and they're just like all right no more refunds for anybody but it's also like uh is it still in beta for pc no, it no that, it's a real game it's a real 60 dollar, not early access game and that's what right. makes it worse did it come out to consoles before pc no nope. it, it was a simultaneous launch mm-hmm. yeah yep but since i still don't have any information on what the nature of the bugs are and if it is one of these things where people have played it for like 20 hours it's, and they just, it's it's yeah it's it, it's just buggy you ever played it you played bethesda games they're just buggy games but that's you should fucking know what you're getting into if you're I, a fan I, of those. it's like, it's, it's, what, it's what, exceptionally what, more buggy than before yeah. like it's more you know more times do the monsters come at you with the t-pose and more times are their face skin separated from their you know, bodies and things like that but I, I don't think that's that's not really where i wanted to, to steer this topic into i just kind of wanted to talk about digital returns in general and what you feel is a fair amount of time or because it can't be a case-by-case basis you can't have a human going all right this guy wants a return he played it for this long what kind of game it is there needs to be some kind of automation well that's why i think the steam system is probably well i don't have any other experience with anything else so i by like microsoft it's it's the best and the worst for Mm -hmm. for my sake but i mean you answer the few questions it already knows how long you've played and then i'm pretty sure when you send it in if you've met like whatever the prime three three requirements are it just refunds and then if it kind of goes beyond that i think it it goes up for review but Mm -hmm. that seems like just a fine system for such a large company um and like i said i i want to say that that was a regulatory issue with some of the nations that they did business with and so Mm -hmm. i'm i want to feel like every uh uh, distributor system probably has something like that but how they get it done is kind of the question so well i mean the like like Xbox has a similar system. It's about a two hour thing where you can you can send it back. PlayStation, the second you start downloading the game, that's it. Uh, I think you can ask for a refund, but I think it's all case by case. I don't think they have a sweeping policy where you can guarantee to get your money back if something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I would I would like to see. You can't just throw a blanket like five hours down on something because there are smaller games that aren't five hours long. So I'd like to see some kind of sliding scale where based on maybe the cost of the game, that gives you extra time to try to figure out if you like it or not. I still think the two hours is a good mark. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't be paying a lot for any game that lasts too much shorter (laughs) than around the two hour mark. Um, Because you could get pretty decently far into one of those walking simulator type games like uh, Gone Home Mm -hmm. I played. And that's not very long, especially if you don't spend a lot of time screwing around and you just want to see the end. But when it came out, it was like 20 to 30 bucks. And I remember a lot of the reviews were negative just because the game time to game price was skewed. But you should know by two hours in whether or not you're going to be into that game. So... I think that is a really good mark. Uh, I don't think five hours... Five hours seems a little excessive. Well, some of these big, you know, games of service, like this Fallout 76, I don't know in two hours, shit, I might be in the damn character creator for an hour of that if the character creator's in depth. 
and I might not get out of the main tunnel in two hours to even see where the bugs are at. So I think that just saying two hours is close, but maybe not great for every style game. No, I mean, I, I in an idea, in an ideal world, there would be a complete sliding scale where like every game determined how far you could make it into the game before your, your cutoff got taken away. Like you could level up to level, you know, X in this game or get to level two in this game, but it, it, leaving it up to the publishers to determine when their refunds are, you know, able to be determined would just make them make the game just good enough to get you past the refund. Yeah. I, I'm still kind of split though, because part of me wants to say, don't buy games day one, wait for reviews, wait for the public to get a hold of it and sort of figure it out for you. But that's not really doable because, like I said, I would I would buy Terraria 2 if it just suddenly materialized on Steam up to a certain price point. It would just it'd just be something I owned, mm -hmm. and it could be garbage, and I'd be like, oh, shit, that was a mistake, and I'd be kind of pissed if I couldn't return it. So there are certain games that are, are going to be like, hey, this is my day one. I have to buy it. But I don't know. Uh, coming from just that standpoint of not having done that in so long i i'm fine not purchasing any games until i get reviews that i can either read online <clears throat> or metacritic or i actually really like the steam review system where it has you know overall reviews throughout time and then what the current review process is which has actually helped me buy some games because they kind of started out mediocre and then maybe had a good patch or a good update or some like free DLC, and now suddenly it's well received. Mm -hmm. So it's good being able to see new reviews versus old ones. Yeah, so, I mean it's it's one of those things where we live in this connected world, and you know I don't know about you, but I listen to a lot of people talk about games. I read about games a lot. It's kind of hard to escape. I like I like to be part of that conversation. That's half the fun with me. And you know, there's a, there's a small part of me that just wants to get into Fallout seventy six just to see what everyone's bitching about, mm -hmm. but you know, not for not for full price. And yeah, I think I, the thing that moving forward, people are going to have to take in the platform's return policy. I mean, just like any other purchase, like when you purchase anything online, a good, you got to have the return policy in mind. And, and that could be a way for a Microsoft or somebody that's not particularly winning at the moment uh, to put a good foot forward to have a nice, clean, fair return policy. You know, if, if somebody like Sony wants to be strict about not doing that, but uh, let's uh, let's keep moving here. Max, what else do you got on the table for us? All right, let's take a look. Um, apparently, the uh, PlayStation Classic that we drafted a couple of weeks ago, um, some of the games are coming in at 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz. Um, and these are based off of the uh, Australian-based versions of the games. Um, so this I is thought, a slight problem. Euro. What's that? I thought the PAL versions were Euro versions. Yeah. And, um, and and Australia, Australia and New Zealand yeah. oh, no. so and then NTA everywhere that's not Asia, um, Asia or US. Yeah, well, yeah, because we have the NA version. Um, so yeah, they're running some of the games. Uh, I think nine of the twenty games are at fifty hertz um, instead of sixty hertz, which means they have a slower refresh rate, um, but the resolution of the games are a tiny bit higher. Um, so this could be a problem with. Uh, just TVs in general because they could come out um, a little jittery. Um, yeah, which I, I, might not be a problem with most games, but say you're playing Tekken 3. Mm -hmm. Like, do you really want that slight built in lag? I mean, you're not playing anyone online. So, I mean, it's not mm -hmm. like a competitive thing. But if you're playing, you know, your friend sitting on your couch, do you, you know, that alone could affect the game itself. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen much about like input lag, but what what what's happening at a game running at fifty frames per second on a sixty frames per second TV is what they end up doing is just slowing the game down. Mm -hmm. So the game runs about twelve percent slower than you're used to. That's how they compensate for the the loss of frames, and this is just another nail in the coffin for the PlayStation Classic. I mean, you came this... out with a bad, you came out with a bad lineup and now your games aren't even playing as good as they did on the original hardware at a $100 yeah. price point. I yeah. definitely feel like they phoned this one in, which is why it was so disappointing. It was like 
I know Nintendo has their own reasons and abilities to come up with these great, you know, meshed consoles. And then you want to you want to try to compete with that. And you're like, oh, PlayStation's going to do it. And everybody's like, yes, those really great fucking games. It's going to be amazing. And then they're like, actually, they're going to be mostly shitty games. And and it's going to suck in general. Just in general, it's going to be a featureless console. It's going to have no extra bells and whistles. And the games are going to suck. Like, mm-hmm. like not the games themselves are going to suck. They're just going to suck in a playability sense. They're going to run mm-hmm. poorly and play no, poorly. That, that, yeah, this, is, which... this, is, this is it. I mean, this is... I wasn't planning on buying one particularly. I mean, it was one of those things where maybe if I got it in my hands and saw it, I might be like, oh, maybe I do need this thing. But I think this is it. I think I think we can just pretty much shut the door on this chapter of... Uh, yeah, that's too bad. It had, it had potential. But uh, I guess they uh, dropped the ball there. I did read an article where they said there is one single game that makes that console worthwhile. And I sort of laughed at it because I'm pretty sure I at least mentioned it if I didn't put it on my throwaway as uh, something I wanted during our draft. But Intelligent Cube. Yeah. Because it was a huge hit in Japan and it never quite got a good following in America until it had that sort of off-brand cult following Mm -hmm. and you can't find a copy that's not a crazy amount of money so they're like this this is the one game on here that's actually really expensive and if you were to try to find real copies of all these like to make it monetarily worthwhile to have the system that's pretty much the only one (laughs) that uh would make it worthwhile and i was like huh no shit well still don't give a fuck it's (laughs) it's not interesting to me. Not gonna pay for Man, it. J- Jumping Flash is also one of the games that uh, is running at the 50 frames a second instead of the 60 frames a second. So that's gonna run slower than people are used to as it is. So I mean, even that. Well, that's a shame because yeah. that game looked like shit anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, you can't win them all. So. You can't win them all. We uh, we pretty much covered the next topic at the beginning of the show when I was talking about my Red Dead experience and i hope to have a better uh critique of the online experience next week when i actually am able to play yeah you have to let us know how the online aspect is treating you um hopefully you don't give up on it right away like you did the red dead 2 i'll I'll push through uh, i'll push through you know we'll see um so one of our last topics i guess uh square enix is pulling a couple of games off the belgium market because uh, Belgium passed a legislation legislation cracking down on loot boxes. Um, so, what do you think about this in general? Like, I know you pay sixty dollars for a game, and then they want you to purchase either DLC or their microtransactions to mm-hmm. get mostly cosmetic stuff. You know, you can get boosts to help you throughout the game and whatnot. But is that the content creator's fault that people are buying these random loot boxes where so, you don't necessarily have a hundred percent chance of getting what you want. So the, the overarching issue was, wasn't, is it the fault of anything? It's mostly, um, are you prepared as whichever society or culture that, you know, didn't want this, to expose children to a form of gambling, which is exactly what loot boxes are. Because it's like, uh, the last game I played with loot boxes was Overwatch, which I think did a pretty good job about it because there's nothing in those boxes other than skins or just show off stuff. So Mm -hmm. if you just wanted to play the game, you don't give a shit. But if you're really into it and you really wanted that, you know, holiday skin that's only going to be available for a certain amount of time, then if you're a kid you're going to be tempted to keep throwing down like 20 bucks to open up 50 more boxes to keep trying to get this stuff. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a closed ecosystem, so it doesn't have any uh, secondary market, which is also a big pro in my book, but you could have some of these games like um, CSGO where they have the, the boxes drop. You have to pay for a key. You can open it up and then the shit that's inside 
people may actually buy for real money on the market like mm-hmm. those goddamn knives that are hundreds of dollars and i was like what's what's the point but didn't they do they changed something about that recently with it within the last year or two to sway people from doing that i don't think that you can just like auction that are do like the roulette with the skins and things like that i haven't seen it on twitch at least so i can't imagine that it's still a yeah. big popular thing because that used to be a huge view drawer you know people would sit there and just pump money into the yeah people the would put it on youtube and they're like here yeah. i'm gonna open up 100 boxes and mm-hmm. see if i can pull any epic weapons but it, it's the that's the question there is are you going to expose kids to gambling because that's what it is. It's now involving real money for objects. Um, I'm a little torn because sometimes I do enjoy loot boxes. I totally object to any of them that actually impact the game in any way. So if it's, it, if it's the thing is, I'm going to interrupt you right there because yeah, magic, magic, <laughs> magic is the original loot box game, and every purchase you make affects the game. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's that was built around that. I understand it's, that, but I mean that's that's, that's the entire nature of a TCG. I I understand, but I mean that's it's still a video game that you're putting money into to get something that you're not necessarily knowing what you you want. My big problem with this is I th- I hate loot boxes. I would rather games be eighty dollars and just ignore all the like. Just don't put this crap in the game. You know, give me all the skins. Let me earn them through play, like the good old days. But I know that that's never going to happen. So, well, that's the thing. The, to... pr- the price of games aren't going up with inflation. Like mm-hmm. it's been sixty dollars for a game for the past mm-hmm. what ten, fifteen years. Yeah, unless I you mean, live in Australia. Actually, should it came down in price from when we were kids? There so, were I mean, there was can't... no like unified price for a game. And you, I remember playing like seventy dollars for Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> But I mean, uh, again, I don't necessarily fault the creators for trying to get more money. I guess. No, no. I mean, it's it's one of those things where you just got to pay with your your wallet, like you kind of always be talk about. Yeah, there can be children, I guess, that don't yeah. necessarily understand what they're doing. I guess um, purchasing uh, these boxes. I would I would suggest an alternative instead of loot boxes for any particular reason that you can purchase with real money like i said i don't mind loot boxes as long as they don't offer you any sort of buff or bonus or pay to win Uh, i like them as just cosmetics or whatever that you can purchase if you'd like to but you also don't have to go that route you could do what um in exile did with um shit what's that diablo like game uh path of exile Path of exile Exile. Exile. so their game is free it's huge it's been around for years now and you can pay real money for basically just cosmetics into the game and that's how they make their money is they're like if you like our game and you want to look like a pimp go ahead and buy some of this stuff or just basically donate to us and Mm -hmm. they've been staying afloat like that so even a system where it's like go ahead and buy into our game for i don't know 10 20 bucks and then we have a whole online marketplace for skins or whatever if you want to pimp with people i wouldn't mind that and then you don't have to do loot boxes or hell if people like loot boxes keep them inside the game as a feature i mean that's what dota is basically you know after a dota match you have a chance to get a skin at least that's how it used to be Uh, i'm not sure if it still is but they still do boxes, though, don't they? Boxes um, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. So if, yeah, because yeah, sure you do. can just like flat out buy the cosmetics themselves. Yeah. So if you could just do that, or if by playing the game you could still get that gambling aspect by, you know, getting a box with a key, you know, something you can actually open, but not have to spend real money on, that would be a better I mean, idea. I mean, these are all great ideas, but. I, mean, I think the, the news story is that the government stepped in to put an end to these yeah. things. Yeah. They didn't I don't want... I, I don't want the government in my video games. I don't care. I don't like what they're doing, but ultimately I don't want the government in the video games. They can say, all right, put a label on this that says that there's in-app purchases. You can call it gambling. You can do whatever you want. But to flat out say that this style of thing 
is not allowed period is a slippery slope that I'm not willing to, uh, you know, go down. Yeah, I mean, uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to pull Final Fantasy XI because you have a 1% chance to get a Kieran's episode? I mean, that that was that was the original. I mean, that it's not loot boxes. It's but you're paying a, you're thing. paying a, you're paying a monthly fee to play a game. They're obviously going to make it as hard as fuck to level up, and then really hard to get the stuff that you want because they want you to keep paying. I mean, it's it's the stuff. The monetization of people is always going to exist. Right now, we can't convince somebody to pay a monthly fee for a an MMO. That's that model is dead and so is never going to come back. I want to I make the delineation there though that. Um you you had you were paying money to try to get that Kirin Zosod or whatever else in any MMO. But this is particularly just loot boxes. Like you were no, paying No, I, I understand that it's a different you're, you're thing. Paying cash money for an unknown item at all. You have no idea what's gonna be in there. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you're driving people to potentially get more and more of them and spend more money chasing that high of am i going to get this you know epic or unique item that i've been yeah. looking for um, let people let people know they're in there don't legislate them out i mean i don't like them but it's still just a slippery slope hey i don't have a whole lot of time left so okay. uh hold on um, i have two more short points to make uh yeah. <laughs> things that have happened uh pokemon let's go it sold 1.5 million units in the united states alone since its launch I mean, that's pretty amazing, and I'm not the only one that loves it, apparently. You might have the most played time in... (laughs) In five days. Five days. And uh, my last point here, uh, Blizzard is reportedly making a Warcraft theme take on Pokemon Go. Somehow, Uh, they're going to integrate WoW and, like, single-player missions in a Pokemon Go-style game. I hate it. Didn't they already do that? Uh, No, there's a Harry Potter one. There's and a Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters game. one. No, I think but isn't there, else is coming out. They isn't can't. There they can't. They can't. They're going to get killed. They already got annihilated at hey. BlizzCon for an- announcing uh, their <laughs> whatever the Mortal. hell Diablo yeah. mobile game. Yeah. If they would have came out and said, all right, we got one more thing, and it's it, it's Warcraft Go, <laughs> people would have burnt the place down. So, wait, is <sighs> this an, an additional game? Or just a new mode within? No, it's a it's a mobile game. It's a new oh. mobile game. It's okay, a, that's it's, different. It's, a, it's I, a monster catching game. Yeah, but I thought you were talking about in WoW, and I was like, no, 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 no. That because no. you could catch critters. No, no, no. Fight no. I'm critters. talking was, a brand like, new game news. on your phone. You have a phone, right? Uh, well, then you should. You guys uh... have phones, right? <laughs> hey guys, I I gotta get out of here. If you guys see any um, Keyforge decks anywhere, pick them up because they are hard as fuck to get. Yeah, and we gotta. Try and, Get some I was trying to get a hold of them. I was hope, trying to hopefully for next week we can talk about that. I thought um, that release was until December fifth. Nope, it's it's out. Uh, okay, because I think I went I went on like Amazon and they said uh, that they're just sold out. And they're sold out until December fifth. I, I was talking to the guy at the Adventures. He's getting his shipments in and they're leaving as soon as he gets them. So keep your eyes out for him. Um, well, I'll let you, you sign. I'll let you guys sign off. I'm gonna head out, guys. Thanks. All right. Did well, you see the uh, Keyforge uh, problem that they had? Oh no, he closed the video and it messed everything up. <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to have an empty screen, so I think I'm just going to kill the stream right now. Um, it's Twitch TV, uh, twitch.tv slash game night now. We're on Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a good night. Next week, it won't be so ridiculous, I promise. That's not a good promise to make.